Welcome to the Mouth That Roared. You are watching this on either YouTube or Facebook, but you can also check out the podcast, the audio version of the show, at podbean.com. I thank you all for watching this. I hope you enjoy it. And now, here is the host of the show, Chris Sheehan. Everybody and welcome to today's edition of the Math That Roared right here on Podbean.com, Facebook, and YouTube as well. And I thank you all for joining me. And on today's show, I would like to talk about basically the consequences for your actions. Now, I am your host, Chris Sheehan. I am the host of the Math That Roared. I can't stress that enough. I love this uh, this particular podcast. I enjoy being. I enjoy creating. You know, I, I never thought I would enjoy being a creative person, or at least somewhat of a creative person, but apparently I was wrong. I really misjudged that. So, you know, I have a lot more of good uh, shows up and coming, but without further ado, let's get started with this one. So, basically, today, again, is all about consequences of your actions, and the first uh, story that I would like to talk about would be the... Former Philadelphia Eagles linebacker Michael Kendricks was indicted. He was charged uh, Wednesday, August, what's today's date? The 31st, so that would have been the 30th, right? I th I don't know. Today's a Friday when I'm taping, I'm recording this. But anyway, uh, he was charged Wednesday with um, insider trading by f uh, federal prosecutors to make nearly $1.2 million dollars. To illegal profits in illegal profits on four major investments four years ago. Now, I am reading an article on ESPN.com. I just I'm going to skim through it to go through all of the important details of this uh, particular topic. Now, Michael Kendricks, for those of you that don't know, was a again a former Philadelphia Eagles linebacker. Uh, he won the Super Bowl with them last year, and. He was just a, how should I put this, an average player. I mean, I, I have to admit, you know, I never really cared for him, but in all the years that he was an Eagle and all the years that he was a football player in general, who the hell would have ever thought that this guy would have been this stupid, honestly? I mean, that's just my opinion. I mean, I think that, you know, many, the, the NFL is not known, let me put it this way, the NFL is not known for having its smartest players on or off the field. Um... You know, there's an exception, a few of them. I mean, most of them are very, like, for example, Carson Wentz. You know, that guy is very smart on and off the field. You know, Nick Falls. I mean, just to name, an, just to name a few Eagles, because after all, I am an Eagles fan. But as for Michael Kendricks, he's not exactly the sharpest knife in a drawer. I mean, if he was, he would have gotten away with this. Or, better yet, he wouldn't have done it in the first place. I mean, honestly. You know, but... Apparently, we don't always get what we want. So, the person, the, the sort of, I guess you could say the brains of the operation, because it sure as shit wasn't Michael Kendricks, was a guy by the name of DeMarley, I, I can't even fucking say his name, DeMar, 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 DeMarley Sanoiki, a television writer who happened to work on the uh, TV show Blackish on ABC. He was a writer for that uh, particular show for a couple of seasons, and he also is a big, apparently, like a, a investment. Uh, he went to college for investing or something like that. Apparently, he worked on Wall Street or some, you know, some bis some bizarre thing like that. But honestly, I just think that you know this really. How do I put this nicely? It really. Is going to affect Michael Kendricks. It's really going to affect his family. It's going to affect, you know, all of his, just everybody throughout, you know, his life. I mean, even some of the teams that he's played for, in a way, it will affect that as well. Now, Michael Kendricks, um, you know, I wish him luck. I wish that, you know, hopefully he'll be able to get through this. Uh, if anything, it should only be about a year in prison, which really isn't all that bad. All that bad, I should say. Uh, but you never know. I mean, any jury, any you know, judge could say otherwise. But I look at it this way: if Martha Stewart, who happens to be a female, only does six months for the same crime, then you know maybe there's a good chance that he'll only have to do a year. I mean, really, or maybe he'll do the same as Martha Stewart. I mean, who knows? I mean, really. 
he could be out in six months to a year, honestly. But again, it all depends. I mean, it just that's just how it, that's just how it is. Now, um, as for the future of his career, I would say that he's going to be back in the NFL because I look at it this way: that if, um, for example, Michael Kendricks or Ray, Lu or not Mike Michael Kendricks, I mean Michael Vick. If Michael Vick could get back into the NFL, if Ray Lewis could get back into the NFL, and they killed they killed living things, by the way. I mean, Michael Vick killed dogs. Ray Lewis had somebody killed. So, he stabbed somebody, apparently. Or at least that was the, the uh, so-called, you know, conspiracy theory, I guess you could put it as. But, either way, Michael Kendricks hasn't hurt anybody. So I would definitely say that he will be welcomed back, then, welcomed back into the NFL. I think, you know, it will take a while, though. I don't think it's going to be within a year or so. I think you could possibly see him sit out for maybe about two years, including jail time. Um, but the good news is that he's only 27 years old. So he, could, he does have a little bit of time left. So with all that being said about Michael Kendricks, again, I wish him luck. I wish his family uh, the best. But it doesn't look too good for him. So, what does that tell you? That tells you don't do the crime if you can't do the time, I suppose. So, moving on to the next uh, subject. And that is, it's basically staying with the consequences of your actions whole uh, theme for this show. And that is a story that actually happened to me. I want to tell you all about it. Uh, basically, I would say within the last maybe five... I, I would have to say maybe the last five years or so. Maybe, maybe six, if I'm not mistaken. Now... If you could hear background noise, I want to apologize first off because there's many th noises going on before I start the story. There is a dog barking. There is somebody inside in the kitchen making a, a lot of noise, banging pots and pans and dishes, and you just want to strangle them. But you can't because then you go to jail, and there you go. That blows the whole conversation of consequences for your actions. So... Anyway, back to what I was saying, the whole story that I was going to talk about, and that is a time in my life when I actually had to go through a, I had a consequence for my actions, and that was when I cheated on a test, believe it or not. Yes, I cheated on a test, I admit, I was a very immature, selfish, little bastard, I guess you could say. But anyway, it wasn't the kind of test that you may think it was. It wasn't like a school test or anything like that. What it was was a CCD. Basically, CCD is for those of you that uh, who aren't too religious, like me, for instance. Uh, basically, it's a Catholic school, like a Catholic nighttime school in a sense, where they send you, uh, they send kids from like for about maybe two hours or so. In, uh, well, at least for us, it was a Tuesday night. And basically, what they would do is they would put you in a room, and you would learn about God from pretty much the whole time you were there. You know, your, your parents would pay, like, a tuition or whatever. They'd pay, like, a 100 bucks for the whole year or something like that. And they would give you, you know, that would be how you would make your uh, confirmation and all your other sacraments and all that kind of shit. Needless to say, let me just say this, is that Many times, many, many years that we were there, me and my sister, uh, we did not learn anything about God. In fact, we learned the complete opposite. We learned, honestly, how to become Satanists. No, I'm only joking. But we have, um, they, in all seriousness, they actually never taught us anything. They, the only thing that they made us do is play hangman. We would play hangman, and not even religious hangman, just hangman in general. You know, you would be playing that on a chalkboard, and then, after a while, you would just put your head down and go to sleep. That's usually what happened. That's why I would get, I would have to stop playing video games for two hours every Tuesday night to go to the stupid fucking thing that they didn't teach us nothing. But you know what? I'm not bitter about it. That's for damn sure. I am not bitter whatsoever. Now, anyway, mind you that that happened for about maybe, I would say, four out of the six, I would say about six years, six out of the four years, or four, four out of the six years that we were there, that's what happened. And then there was one year, uh, one time when my sister actually, her class had to go and pick trash out of the parking lot like they were a bunch of little, you know, juvenile delinquents. I mean, really. 
I mean, they, they gave them the sticks and everything, and they were poking at the trash and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it was ridiculous. I mean, what does this have to do with teaching religion, for Christ's sakes? But I digress, because guess what? My sister and I, we're not really the most religious. I mean, granted, my sister uh, changed religion. She decided to become a non-denominational Christian. Although, if you ask me, I think, honestly, she's a Satanist, but that's just my opinion, because there's no attitude changes or nothing, just or nothing. There's, you know, she's the same mean, crazy psycho that she's always been. Just now she happens to be praying a little bit more and, you know, throwing Bible verses in your face. But, again, that's none of my business. And I digress. So, anyway, cheating on a test. That could probably be the lowest thing that a person could do. I mean, especially for CCD. Am I right or am I wrong? I would like to say, honestly, that the only reason I did it was because my... Uh, volunteer, I don't even call them teachers, they, they like to use the title teachers, but to me, a teacher is somebody that actually teaches, you know, not just teaches uh, a class how to play hangman, or how to pick up trash, but to actually teach about what, they're, what they are there to teach about, you know, for example, in this case, religion. A lot of these teachers never did that, so I give them the credit, the satisfaction of at least being a volunteer, because they didn't get paid for this shit. They never received any compensation whatsoever. And, you know, can you blame them? I mean, the, the nuns and the priests and all for paying for not paying these people? I mean, they're a bunch of idiots, honestly, if you ask me. They're not even qualified to wipe their own ass, let alone teach a class about religion. But I digress yet again. Now, the as for the test, the reason why I cheated on it was because the... And I keep beating around the bush here, but I, I have so many things more to say about religion and, and all of this CCD crap in general that it's just eating me alive. You know, it really is. It really bothers me thinking back on this. I mean, I could have had such a closer relationship to God had I not been forced to, to go to this shit every Tuesday night. I mean, really, just to, just to tag along for, you know, other family members and all to see you make your confirmation or whatever... I mean, when you didn't even give a shit about it. I mean, I don't want anything to do with the Catholic Church anymore, I gotta admit. I mean, I'm not a Catholic as much as I, you know, I, I really am not a Christian by any means. I am also not an atheist. I am not a, uh, uh, what's the, agnostic. I am not any of that. But I don't know what it is that I believe in. You know, I, I am very uh, close-minded, I guess you could say, when it comes to religion. I just, I happen to think that there are certain things out there for certain people, and I am one of those people. Now, the religion, the uh, testing, I basically, I cheated on the test, and I keep saying this, I haven't gotten around to the story yet, but basically the uh, teacher caught me, she, she, I had the cheat sheet hidden under my desk, and I was taking the test, and I kept uh, making the rookie mistake the first time I ever did it, by glancing down at the paper every couple of seconds, and she kind of caught on to me. And all of a sudden, I look up, and she happened to see me, and uh, I'll never forget this, this uh, like, panting kind of noise. You know, like, you know how a dog pants? This is what this lady sounded like. She, she literally was breathing, like... <laughs> I mean, she really sounded like a dog, in a sense. I mean, and I didn't know what, you know... It turns out that she was, like, hovering right over me as I was doing this. And then I looked up, and you see the look on this this lady's face, you know? And she she's a very, how do I say this delicately? She was a very, um, a very bloated kind of woman. I mean, she was very puffy all over the place, you know? If you catch my drift, she was a very heavy set, very fat woman. And... She got mad at me. She got pissed off at me because I cheated. And, you know, I can't say that I blame her. I mean, I was a little pissed off as well because I got caught. Not because I cheated, but because I got caught and she threw me out of the damn class. And then all hell broke loose after that. I have to admit, all hell broke loose. And she basically threw me out of the class. She had her assistant, her assistant teacher... Uh, escort me down to sister's office, which basically he wasn't even a teacher. He was an assistant, like a high school kid, doing like community service, and he just sat and you know listened to her talk and handed out papers and shit. I mean, he didn't contribute anything, if you ask me. But again, you know, 
nobody would listen to me. I mean, nobody would listen to somebody my age and, you know, with my kind of knowledge about things. Nobody gives a shit. I mean, everybody just looks at me like I'm retarded or something like that. But I digress yet again. And anyway, this uh, so-called teacher escorted me down to sister's office where the whole time he was lecturing me like... Again, this kid couldn't be much older than me, and he's got the nerve to give me all this advice and tell, talk all this shit about me, you know, saying what a what a horrible thing I just did, and you know, I, I something about I'm gonna like go to hell or something like that. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. You know, I I don't need you. Get get the fuck away from me. And I ended up like just leaving. I like I ended up just walking right away from him, going right to sister's uh, office by myself, and basically, um, sister yelled at me. You know, and I admit, I took it, I didn't, you know, curse or nothing like that, because, you know, you gotta be respectful around somebody in a dress like that, you know, you gotta be respectful around a nun, which, really, I don't really care for uh, nuns in particular, uh, again, I guess that's because I'm not really all that religious, but, you know what, I was respectful nonetheless, I did what I, I, I fessed up to what I did, I said what I had to say, and that was the bottom line of it, that was the end of it, so... Basically, uh, she threatened to expel me. Then, after she threatened to expel me, she called my mother. And that's when all hell broke loose. That's when I, you know, basically lost it. I mean, I, I started bawling like a baby. I gotta admit, I started crying my eyes out. Uh, not so much because I got caught, but because my mother, you know, was there. And she had kind of a disappointing look on her face. But after a while, she kind of understood, though, you know. She wasn't really... Uh, too fond of the whole idea of me cheating, but she let me, uh, you know, slide, so to speak. I mean, she was very accept, she was very understanding about it. And the fact that the teacher threatened us the week before or whatever, that didn't go over too big with her either. So, you know, needless to say, my mother wasn't all that happy about it, but at the same time, she understood. So, basically, the whole outcome of this long, 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 boring story. I mean, it's not really all that boring. I mean, this is the short version. I mean, can I, I... I could probably tell you a much longer version for probably double this time. But anyway, this is just like a nice little summary. And, and basically, the outcome of what happened was that I was able to retake the test. And uh, I don't remember if I passed or failed. I believe I failed. But I still never got held back, which was kind of ironic, because that's all they did was bitch and moan that, oh, you're going to get held back, you're going to, you know, have to do this for the rest of your uh, CCD uh, career or whatever. But, you know what I mean? Like, you're, the rest of the time that you're in CCD, you're going to have to stay uh, at this, until you graduate, you're going to have to stay in this class and all of that crap. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just going to leave. And so, basically, it worked out because... I wasn't, I wasn't going to repeat it anyway. I would have said fuck it and just not, not have gone. I don't care what sacraments. I don't care about anything like that. And that's all I got. You know, that's really what I have to talk about today. So, basically, I'm going to wrap this up. A long story goes with a long, basically exciting ending. Because that's what happened is that I basically was... Uh, you know, I, I was able to get away with it. I mean, I didn't get punished for it. I didn't have to... Granted, I felt guilty about it. But now, as I look back on it, I honestly feel like, you know, it was kind of funny looking back on it. I mean, because it was just such a... How do I say this? It was It was very, you know... It was like one big shit fest is what it was. That's really how it was. And it just, you know... When they threaten you like that, and they think that, you know, oh, they, they could do what they want, they could say what they want, that really scares you, you know, as a kid especially. And to be able to get away with something like that is actually kind of awesome, I gotta admit. So, I was glad that I was able to get away with it. I was glad that, you know, I didn't get in trouble, I didn't get punished, but I was also glad, more importantly, that I didn't have to, grad I didn't have to uh, uh, redo the, you know, 8th grade school year, or whatever, for uh, CCD. So anyway, with all of that being said, I want to ask you all a question on social media. I hope you all will, will respond to it. Do you think that it is okay to cheat on a test? Even if it's not a school test, even if it's like a religious kind of test, like in my particular case, do you happen to think that that is okay, that it should be a little acceptable, they should be a little more lenient on that? 
or should it be a little more uh, strict or, you know, anything like that for that matter. So, I hope you all will answer that question on social media. You could go to Facebook, you can go to YouTube, even Instagram as well, and type your replies, uh, your comments, your questions, your concerns are always welcomed on the Mouth That Roared uh, social media pages. And I thank you all for joining me on this very long edition of the Mouth That Roared podcast on Podbean.com, YouTube, and Facebook. I thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for joining me, and goodbye, everybody.